our international obligations on this matter. Uh, the Honourable David Parker. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. I uh, just want to reiterate why it is that we won't be supporting Brendan Horan's uh, proposed amendment to Clause 2, which uh, changes the open-ended nature of Clause 2, subsection 2. Uh, Mr Chairman, uh, the main uh, provisions, substantive provisions of this Act are contained in sections 5 and 6, sorry, clauses 5 and 6 of this Bill, which refer to amendments to the existing Schedule 1 of the International Finance uh, Agreements Act. And that schedule sets out New Zealand's current obligations vis-a-vis -vis the IMF. This Act changes those provisions uh, in the way that is set out in Schedule 1 to this Amendment Bill and Schedule 2 to the Amendment Bill. Schedule 1 to the Amendment, uh, Schedule 1 of this Amendment Bill gives effect to the 2008 reforms, 2008 reforms to the IMF, which were agreed then, uh, but which have yet to be implemented in New Zealand law, even though we have agreed to them uh, at the international forum. Uh, now, the date on which the 2008 reforms can and should come into effect is when this legislation is given effect to through receiving the Royal Assent. And that's what the effect is of clause 2 subsection sub clause 1 it says that the, that part of this act comes into force on the day on which it receives uh, royal assent except to the extent provided in subsection 2 and that subsection 2 then takes out of that general proposition the provisions in section 6 so that section 6 doesn't come into effect on the date when the legislation receives royal assent but rather comes into account into effect on such, such later date as is given effect to by order and council. And for the Labour Party that's appropriate in the circumstances because the section six, uh, sorry, the clause six provisions uh, are the 2010 reforms and we're not ready to have them brought into effect yet and so it's appropriate that Parliament authorises them being brought into effect at a later date. Now, this is slightly different to the uh, concern that we have about future changes to these, uh, these uh, provisions in the uh, Governing Act, which set out New Zealand's obligations to the IMF. We think they shouldn't be able to be changed by statutory regulation. Uh, we're happy that the current changes, which are agreed through this legislation through a proper process, don't come into effect in part until the uh, government passes an order in council pursuant to this new clause to subs clause two uh, and therefore will be supporting this clause. Members, we come to the vote on clause two. The quick, we have an amendment to the name of Brendan Horan to replace clause two as set out on SOP number 175. The question is that the amendment be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. To the contrary, no. no. The noes have it. The question is that clause two stand part. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. Ayes have it. Ayes have it. Party votes called for. I'll ask the clerk for a party vote. New Zealand National. 59 votes in favour. New Zealand Labour. 34 votes in favour. Green Party. 14 opposed. Oh. New Zealand First. Seven votes in favour. Māori Party. Three in favour. Mana. One opposed. Act New Zealand. One in favour. United Future. One in favour. Brendan Horan. One in favour. <laughs> Members, the ayes are 106, the noes are 15. Clause 2 will stand part. The question now is a clause three stand part. The Honourable David Parker. Uh, Mr Chairman, the Labour